Well, the uh, the Observer did come out on time, and everybody got to read it this morning. If if you have, and um, the Punk and, and Jack Perry story is in there from all the different sides. That that's one of the things that I think is crazy from a reporting aspect of the story is just how many different sides there are and how uniquely different all of these sides are. Every story was a little bit different. Yeah. Um, and well, they're going to, they're going to be, you know, especially with the, with the Jack Perry and the, the punk, of course, they're going to be different. You know, um, every story is different these days. I mean, that's how it, how it is, but, uh, I don't know. You know, it's just, um, you know, you, every time you think that, you know, that it, it's, it's, there's not going to be anything and it, it's, 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 it's insane. It really is. It's insane at this point. You know, I mean, people talk about different things in different sports, but I don't know of any time there's been like, there've been incidents in sports and there've been fights on sports teams. People go, oh, there's fights on sports teams, but something where it's like almost every week, you know, there's something. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I, I, I mean, my gut is, is that, uh, you know, what, I mean, I don't want to go get into the guy's head. It's whatever it is, you know, but it just keeps happening. And I don't know, you know, what's, what they're going to do or if they're going to do anything, um, which is one of the, the whole situations there is that you just don't know. Other than um, they're, they're both suspended. You know, right before a pay-per-view in Chicago, that is, you know, clearly the weakest pay-per-view that that AEW, the weakest lineup. I don't say weakest show because it might end up being a great show, but the weakest lineup that they've ever put together on a pay-per-view to date, um, and a, on a one-week turnaround, which is also something they've never done before. I mean, usually it's three, four-month turnaround, and now they're doing a one-week turn turnaround. I mean, no one's done a one-week turnaround for a pay-per-view since. Uh, what Vince in 1991, I think it was. So um, yeah, late late 1991. And you, you know yeah. the the thing about that show or those two shows, where they were so heavily storyline based, which which I also thought that All In was, especially in the main event, in that the the story or the how the storyline is furthered was more important than the actual match outcome. Because I don't think a lot of people thought that Cole was winning. And that's what was when I, I, I recently watched that stuff back on, on WWE and, you know, they have the Hogan and Undertaker match right in the middle of Survivor Series. And the last two matches on Survivor Series are just they're, they're barely paying attention to them because you're just talking up this angle and you're trying to sell the second pay-per-view. But the second pay-per-view, which is half the price, doesn't even do business worthy of Vince thinking that it was a good idea to try again because uh I, I read in the observer like a few weeks before you thought that there were going to be multiple this tuesday in texas is in 92 but he never did it again yeah vince and i talked about it it was an experiment you know it's like we didn't know what would happen um the idea was the second you do you do a big show with a big audience and then you try to get the people back by shooting a big angle on that show a week later with half with a, a half ticket price, you know, half the price for the pay-per-view, which as we've later learned, you know, halving the price for pay-per-view is just a dumb idea. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work at all. You know, and Vince tried it again a couple of years later, and also it didn't work then too. Like the people who are, if you have a pay-per-view, I mean, there's obviously a limit. If you charge $200 for a pay-per-view, people aren't going to buy, but if you have a pay-per-view, the people who want to buy it will buy it. And people who don't want to buy it will not buy it. And the price has virtually nothing to do with it. I mean, yes, Impact TNA once did a one penny pay-per-view as a gimmick and did get a lot of people to buy, to buy it for <laughs> one penny. But that's out, you know, that's an outrageous situation. But you know, like uh having the price or or having the same price, the number of people buying would probably have been close to identical, you know. But um but the difference here, like I would in London, I thought, man, we're going to get all these big angles and they're going to show the big angle, with the big hook for the next thing. And then the show ended and it was like, you know, it was a really good, really good show live, but there were no angles. And they shot, um, you know, the the the, the Omega Takeshita, you know, and um, what was the other one? The, um, um, well, the Orange Cassidy and Moxley, I guess. But they were doing that, you know, in the press conference mm -hmm. after the show was over. 
um, not even at the show in front of all those people. And while the, they had their big pay-per-view audience, they did it, you know, after, you know, when, you know, whoever's watching the press conference, which is hardly going to be the number of people watching the pay-per-view. And um, yeah, it was, um, that's how they did it. And now we got a show in, in two days and WWE's got a show tomorrow. It's uh, a lot, you know, especially with all the TV that we have. It's really a lot. So Tony said, I don't remember if he said this at the press conference or if he said this on the media call, but he said he'll he'll have an answer or he hopes to have an answer by Sunday about Punk. I'm assuming whether or not Punk is going to be a part of the show. Yeah. Is that do you, you, you sense that's still the goal? Like he the, he hopes to have whatever investigation they're doing wrapped up by then and then he can decide or do you think is punk just off the show? I think that, you know, the deal is, is that when Saturday night's collision is over, we're going to know, um, you know, when, you know, either they're going to do the angle where when, when Ricky Starks does the challenge, somehow it evolves to see Ricky steamboat that somehow it winds up with punk or somehow it's going to wind up with somebody else, which I believe will be Adam page, which is irony enough as well. And, um, you know, probably would, who, I mean, it shouldn't piss off Punk at all, but it could. I mean, it, would <laughs> it does because everything does. So, um, yeah, I will find out Saturday night, you know. So, um, you know, I mean, he was suspended, but, you know, this is, it, was not, it wasn't like he was suspended for a month or, he, right. or you know, three months or anything. He was suspended until he's not suspended. Suspended until they figure out what to do, it seems like, just to kind of whatever to do with calm, him. maybe calm the waters a little bit. And how much of this do you think is the suspending of him is, you know, the side of the locker room who's frustrated with him and who probably wonders, gosh, what what is this? When is this guy going to actually get in trouble for something, you know, or, or whatever? Well, he's gotten he's gotten in trouble, you know, for other things. but. You know, they keep using him because of the belief that he's a big draw. And I think there's probably a frustration because he, you know, I mean, he he hasn't been the draw that they expected him to be. And I think that's a frustrating aspect of it, too. Not that he's not a draw. He's probably, you know, I mean, Max is probably the biggest draw. And he is probably, you know, and Max and Adam Cole, the act is the biggest draw, but he probably still is the second biggest draw in the company. And he is the biggest, you know, he is a big merch draw, you know, I mean, he's not, but, you know, at some point, and I mean, what, you know, I mean, I think the question is, is, you know, how, how far does this have to go? You know, I mean, a lot of people seem to think that, you know, this started when, when the young bucks and Omega and Adam page signed the four year deal. Cause that, you know, that was something that, you know, I mean, it could have gone either way, but Tony was, obviously adamant to sign them now as opposed to wait you know a couple of months maybe things would whatever and um you know but he did not you know i mean he made it very much worth their while not to wait to go to free agency or you know open it up to where wwe you know um i mean those guys were looking for the best deal possible and the fact that they did it without even testing wwe just tells you what a great deal it was and i mean i heard that they were all thrilled with the deal, you know, I mean, so um, I think that there were people who thought that, uh, you know, that they wouldn't stay and they did. And then, you know, ever since then, it's it's gone from, you know, every now and then to almost every week, you know, mm -hmm. where there's an issue. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.